his eye. Hey everyone, glad to see you back. Glad to see you looking fresh. Space Jam A New Legacy is the newest film out on HBO Max and stars LeBron James and the Looney Tunes and I feel like every other creation that Warner Brothers has ever made because for some reason this movie is a Ready Player One ripoff most of the time. I guess we're getting immediately into the meat of this thing. So, this is a sequel to the 90s classic Space Jam. And as someone born in the 90s, I really like that movie. If you weren't born in the 90s, if you are if you missed the boat, or if you're too old to grow up with the movie, then you wouldn't have liked the movie either. But it hit right for me, and just like it did for a lot of other kids. So, we've been looking forward to a sequel for a long time. And we got one, and it is not anything. It's something. I guess it's. I guess I can't say it's not anything. This movie is a whole lot of nothing, per se. The movie feels very half-baked. It feels very thrown together. But it also feels very intentionally like this. And it feels very forced to be something that it, it really shouldn't be. It is a... Big commercial for all of Warner Brothers. It is a lot of, hey, this character, see this character, let's go to other Warner Brothers worlds. Let's place in Looney Tunes and other worlds. And I don't get why this movie is like that. The original, I guess you could say a crossover thing. It's only two things crossing over, right? It's Jordan and the Looney Tunes playing basketball, right? It's very simple. But this one is James, the Looney Tunes, and also let's go check out uh, the DC Universe, let's go check out the Mad Max Universe, let's go check out Game of Thrones, let's go check out the Matrix. Oddly enough, like, none of those other things, except for DC, are, like, kid-friendly, so I found that very weird, that a lot of the properties that Warner Brothers has in this aren't for kids, when this movie seems to be tailor-made for kids i don't know it, it feels very this was nobody's like dream movie to make this feels like a studio came together and decided that this needs to happen it feels like they're trying to start some weird crossover universe which i hope they're not they've crossed over to plenty of other things before but only on like one-offs like for instance daffy duck being the green loon turn that's a fun little thing, but it's not enough to build, like, a cinematic universe off of. And this movie feels like it's trying to start a cinematic universe a lot of the time when it really shouldn't be. The fears that we've had for a long time, you can't capture lightning in a bottle twice. Space Jam worked so weirdly. Like, on paper, that movie should have been trash. And we see what happens when... That lightning isn't captured and it's, it is trash here. And it, it kind of sucks to say that. I kind of wanted this to be like the Bill and Ted movie last year. And it just surprised me and not necessarily blown me away, but just kind of be good and just prove the naysayers wrong that sequels can come out way later than they should have and still work. But this one definitely doesn't work. They're are a lot of issues, one of them being LeBron can't act. I'm not saying Jordan's a great actor either, but he just really can't act. A lot of the actors are there. Like, Don Cheadle is fun, and he... <laughs> I had a running joke that's like, anytime he, his character exploded in some sort of anger that it wasn't in the scripts, that was actually Don Cheadle flipping out. Obviously, that probably isn't true, but who knows. Don Cheadle's great. Uh, no disrespect to Don Cheadle there. You know, he plays a decent villain. The effects are pretty good most of the time. I think the intercutting into other worlds obviously looks fake. Because it's just like, it's Mad Max or it's Game of Thrones. And then a Looney Tunes character plopped on top. So it's gonna look a little fake. It is what it is. I said the effects are solid. The the looniness is is there. I did laugh a couple times, but just as an overall product, this thing is is desperate to be something that I don't think anyone's like asking for. I don't think anyone is looking forward to something like this. I am a huge fan of Ready Player One. 
it's it's a mixed movie either with it or you're not i'm a big fan of pop culture but when you have a script that's based around pop culture and like what it means and what it can do and stuff like that i think it works in the context of its own movie but in this it, it exists to be like let's pat ourselves on the back let's look at everything we've created let's see all the things that we've done and let's show everyone, hey, these are all these cool things we own. Like, look at all these cool things we own, right? These are cool things that we own. We get it. We got it. All right? You don't you don't need to do that. And it doesn't even really do anything in this. It's weird filler nonsense. You know? it To get a name drop of King Kong or Superman or the Iron Giant in, it's... All right. You did it. You name dropped them. What do they do? They don't, like, come together in this movie. They, they show up for a second, or they're in the background. Or, like I said, they're just a name drop. What is the purpose other than to to be able to to show people, like, oh, look at all these other cool things we own? Crossovers can be cool. I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying never do a crossover again. I'm saying that doing it like this doesn't feel right, doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't work. I said, especially with the tone deafness of, like, this is definitely made for kids. This is a kid's movie. And the original was a kid's movie. Like, anyone can enjoy it. But, like, it's you know, marketed towards kids and all that. This is too. And to have Game of Thrones and Mad Max and The Matrix all be worlds we go to. And then also, in the background, there's Clockwork Orange and Pennywise and stuff that kids definitely shouldn't be shown at a, at a young age. Uh, I just say every kid's different. I mean, I probably watch some stuff too early, but anyways, like I said, as a movie, it's 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 a mess. The plot is serviceable at best. The the actors are are okay to bad, and the music is fine. Right, we get no like iconic theme from the original there's no i believe i can fly anything like that there's no cameos that i expected like in a film of cameos you would think that they would be able to get you know jordan or murray but they didn't that's it uh i don't want to talk about this anymore <laughs> so space jam a new legacy with a soft score of a three out of ten uh not a total disaster but pretty close the effects are good the the music is fine the the acting it's whatever uh as if they made a third space jam at this point just leave it alone now don't don't do space jam 3 now don't don't mess with it leave it leave it alone and yeah that'll about do it for me uh if you like this make sure you like this subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you at some point